about us with your journey of how you have learned to inspire this renaissance of spirit in others around love? Yeah, well, I was a child of the 70s. So growing up in the 70s, I was hearing you can have it all. Okay. And just... <laughs> And my parents were like, you can have it all. You can you can be successful. You can have a family. And, you know, that was really my mission of success was being able to do that. But there was also this level of you don't actually need a man. Right. You can do these things on your own. Right. So part of me was left with this feeling of well maybe it's not cool to <laughs> want to be someone who wants a husband or or do that that I needed to have bigger goals and then you know at the same time I was finding myself always you know dreaming of that person that I would have in my life that I would share my life with and grow old with mm -hmm. but I ended up just kind of hustling along climbing the corporate ladder really keeping my focus on success as money and career right. and making that a priority and I just got to this point one day in my 40s waking up and realizing here I am still single and all my friends married, had kids mm -hmm. and it wasn't working for me anymore. I just decided like that was the moment I said, I don't want this. What I've always truly wanted when I was honest with myself was to have that person who I could love and be loved by. And that was kind of the switch for me. And that's when I made it my mission right. to figure this out wow. and I did and you did and that's what I share now I mean I met this amazing man who when I met him after having hundreds of dates and <laughs> you know a handful of failed relationships at this point it was a moment of wow I really met someone who meets my caliber who gets me who adores me, where there was so much ease and flow. And it really was a result of all of these things that I had discovered that, you know, I couldn't find anywhere else. I couldn't find in a course or through one person. I had to kind of piece it together for right, me right. in a different way. And, you know, in my excitement of having my, what I call laser beam Larry is my husband, <laughs> um, excitement in this relationship, I started sharing it with, with the other women uh -huh. and I couldn't help but share it. It was just so exciting that they were also having these kinds of results. And, you know, that's when I also knew I had something really special to offer. Right. So it's fascinating. I, um, just some pieces that I think everyone in the audience can resonate with is that we have messages we grow up with, right? I was also told I could do it all, and that also meant get married and have children. No one mentioned I shouldn't try to do it all at the same time, that I, I might, that might be a little too much. And, but I think everyone in the audience can relate to that, that we have a history about what we were told and what we've been told relationships should look like and how those should work, and then who we should be in a relationship. I actually grew up in a family where I was told that I was a bit too much, that it'd be hard for me to find a man to love me because there, I was just a lot, right? meaning I needed to tone it down if I was ever going to find love. So I think our audience can definitely mm -hmm. relate to that and then um, relate to at some point realizing that what I have isn't everything I wanted. I'm living an old script and it sounds like that's what happened. You lived you lived an old script. So how did you, I, Yeah. So, how, so let's talk about that. How did you go from finding the courage to live that script, you know, corporate success, to, to changing 
and we'll get into what you do and how you do it in a minute, but how did you find the courage to make that change? From like corporate America to, to, doing, to doing the work you do now. Well, there was always this I mean, part of me because I, I studied art and theater and, and, you know, my parents were very generous in saying, you know, do what you love and, mm -hmm. and follow that. But once I got to the point where I, I had graduated with a double major in art and performance, and then I had a master's in puppetry arts <laughs> and all of those things were so specific and I definitely toured and, and performed for a while but I got really kind of scared because the, the money wasn't coming in right. and I was really you know living off of the bare minimum feeling kind of like oh I should be further along mm -hmm. and then one day I um I just picked up and moved and started temping right. and and because I wanted to figure out a new way to make money and I started um, you know climbing the corporate ladder and I got into really great jobs eventually I mean there's a lot of stories in there but um, where I was making over six figures I had two houses and so yeah that part was kind of addictive but I always knew that I wanted to do something where I was serving people and being creative and um, you know it did become kind of a trap in some ways because you're making the money yet you have this this love to do something different which I know so many Okay, so Macy, can you hear me? I think we just lost your sound. Can you check? I'm here. There you go. Okay, yeah. I'm here. You know, I just have to tell everyone listening okay. and watching that we now have six planets retrograde. Mars just went retrograde. So if, if something technological is not working right, it's not just Mercury that messes with us with that. So just be we just all have to sort of relax with it and understand that sometimes technology does what it does okay so great great story so sometimes you're right the money yeah. can be like um, velvet chains and and we our heart still aches for something else yeah and you were able to follow that you were able to say yeah hey, this is what so that's that's really amazing that one you had the courage to do it and that two you figured it out so let's talk about what what helped you figure out what what to do like this big this secret that you discovered about um, finding love and, and living living your heart's passion well this is the thing I mean I can say that my number one success strategy mm -hmm. was creating a healthy loving partnership in life okay. and that was totally counter to what I grew up with and you know women's lib and all of these stories of like oh, okay just you know be independent and do that and it wasn't that I wasn't independent I was creating everything that I did but when you have a partner by your side cheering you on and you have a shared life it is easier yes and I was finding that you know, as I, I mean, I created my relationship, that's a one process, but to actually go from corporate to entrepreneur yes. was a huge leap. And the way that actually helped in doing that, I mean, there was a clear, distinct moment in my corporate career where, you know, I actually just couldn't do it anymore. I, I just knew yeah. too much about what I wanted to create. And mm -hmm. I was going to do whatever it took because that's how I found, that's how I found love. That's how I got all my other jobs. That's how I bought houses. That's how I created <laughs> success everywhere else was I took, made that decision and did whatever it take, yes. takes. I hired coaches. I got support. I invested in myself so 
you know, it really is kind of two feet in mm -hmm. and saying yes to yourself. And, and screwing things up along the way at times, <laughs> which continues to happen. And then, you know, being willing to be my biggest champion for my desires. Yes, yes. And in fact, um, when I was on your website, I saw that a great deal, that that's sort of the overwhelming message of the website, that first lo love starts inside, and it's happiness starts inside, and it's about how we, you know, my saying is walking in, in my power without fear or apology. That's my little snippet, but I found that. Um, how do people find you? Before we get too far, I want to make sure. So is it bighappylove.com? Is that where they, they can Google Big Happy yeah. Love, right? And find you there, right? And then you have Absolutely. workshops. Absolutely, Big Happy Love. Big Happy Love. You have workshops, you do one-on-one -on -one consulting, you do readings, which we'll talk about in a minute, and you actually have a free webinar tomorrow. And if somebody goes to Big Happy Love, they'll find that and they can still sign up for it. Is that correct? Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. So we have a great deal in common, having left one world for another. I talk about getting to the point where I knew I had sandpaper on my soul and I could no longer do that, that other thing. Um, changed careers the first time. And now this change happened when I realized, and actually it was funny, I, I realized I was done when I put purple streaks in my hair and went to work. I was an academic <laughs> dean. And um, the, you know during COVID, the blue, the, I've not gone to blue, but they've washed out. But I remember going to work and someone saying to me, you, you have streaks in your hair. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, you're an academic dean. And I thought, oh, that's the message. I just told myself that it's almost time to leave, to leave this. Because I think sometimes we look in the mirror and we realize we're changing how we look, and that could be the first message. But it's time to change. So, yeah. So yeah. let's go into I, I some of what you discovered. So you hired these coaches, you did this inner work, and you came up with what is a very unique approach to love. So can you just talk about that for a moment? Because it's fascinating. Yeah, well, this was part, I mean, this was my journey, and since I've studied and, and mm -hmm. added so much to the way that I work with people, but when I was, when I realized I absolutely am ready to find phenomenal love with someone who totally gets me for me, and no more wasting time, no more settling, no more, you know, winging it, that I, I hired a life coach because I didn't really know about love coaches at that point. I don't okay. even know how many there were at that point. But, um, and, and as I was looking around for like anything specifically for what I wanted, I just didn't see it. So that's why I got support. Mm -hmm. I, you know, really got into the inner work of where I wasn't really clear on what it was that I wanted. I realized that I had worn masks for so long to right. fit into the Absolutely. corporate world and to play the roles that I needed to play, which actually worked great for me because I would just say, okay, well, if you need someone to do that, I'll be that, you know, Absolutely. and, and I would just be, be what people needed. But I was also kind of using that in my dating world. I was thinking, oh, if I want a man, I'll just be that. And then I was losing myself in right. every relationship. Right. So the you know, the strategy that I that I ended up taking really ended up being a mind, body, spirit experience. And that's what I teach my clients. I mean, there's plenty of things out there that will tell you, these are the rules, this is what you have to do. Right. This is, you've got to go on so many dates, you have to do it this way. And, and that's completely not, what I did or teach 
or my clients do and they're creating amazing relationships. So it's fascinating because um, I don't know if I, if I had told you when we talked before that I re-entered the dating world oh, a little over a year ago and um, definitely tried some online dating and um, it taken a break from that though I, I met amazing people we just didn't click I also met some people who I uh, I would refer to as sort of stand-up comedy routines that there was that and one of the things I noticed is the fear that and this is for men and women of showing up as who they truly are right so somebody will post a picture of themselves from 20 years ago and I know they don't look like that and or they they on a on a first date they reveal issues about themselves or elements of themselves that that tell me they should have been on a different dating site so is that what is honesty of self one of your first pieces like how do you get to, to help people do that be honest well I would say it's honesty with yourself okay. about who you are and who the right person is for you and that mm -hmm. is can be a process. I mean, when you are looking out into the online dating world and your lenses are, okay, how many people are lying to me? Who's, you know, and getting sucked into kind of the mm -hmm. drama of, of people aren't telling their right age or they're posting old pictures. I mean, there's right. a lot of good people out right. there Absolutely. that are bad daters and, and people <laughs> aren't taking the time to learn how to do this. They're, the the online dating world, unfortunately, and I'm talking about this in my webinar, mm -hmm. how to be the CEO of your love life yes. and win at love without losing yourself along the way. That's something, that's what you mentioned, and it's on my website right on the front page. Big Happy Love, you can sign up there. But we're talking about how the online dating world is not here, like, they don't necessarily care if you find an amazing person. It's right. just software. Right, that's great. And that's great. yeah, it, ha it has some features and algorithms mm -hmm. that are in it. But the, the thing is, there's no barrier to entry. So everybody's on there. So if you can remember that it's just software, if you can remember that these people, really most, I know there's, there's because there's no barrier to entry, there really are people out there who, you know, want to scam people Absolutely. and whatever. Absolutely. Um, but there's ways of detecting that pretty easily. Absolutely. Um, but most people really just want connection. That's a human yes. need, a core need. And when we can just have compassion for that and just follow the energy of the people that are lighting us up, mm -hmm. then then it's going to work a lot better. And and I think of it like going into the grocery store, you're walking down the aisles, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, su uh, low sugar granola. That sounds really exciting to me today. <laughs> and then you just, you lean into that. You're not going past the, the Apple Jacks and getting all pissed off because <laughs> it's, it's not you want, you know? Right. So, you're just neutrally navigating that scene. So this is lovely because I think what you're talking about, because definitely that's been my experience, that so many people, I, I sometimes equate the dating sites to Amazon Prime with how some people treat them. And, and Amazon, we find what we want, but I love how you talk about following, sort of following what excites us, following that light. So there's, um, like a not necessarily a psychic but a spiritual or an energetic level to this to dating for you be it on a online dating site or just when you first meet somebody right so even in a first date would you yeah. have that same kind of advice well i would say the energy continues to shift but certainly on a first date yeah i think it's still the similar advice but typically if you're online dating mm -hmm. and you're you're putting yourself out there i just invite people to just really play like if you haven't done the inner work 
-hmm. if you haven't kind of shed those layers of you know beliefs and maybe frustration or pain from the past then unfortunately putting yourself online before you've done that pre-work is going to be like putting a limping baby bunny in front of a hungry wolf like you just don't want to do that you want to you want to be able to go into it from a place where you're not in the wearing the lens of like protection and judgment and and like fear or having to get it right and and not wanting to do it wrong and like all of that intensity mm -hmm. doesn't help so you know initially online is going to be a very neutral sort of shopping for grocery thing the second level with the first date is still you're in okay is this person a good match for me and in, in really empowering yourself in those ways and then it just kind of develops from there but most pe people are putting so much pressure on themselves at the beginning and making online dating this evil monster before they even start and if you talk to anybody you're probably going to get a laundry list of stand-up comedy routines about the dates that they've gone on and that you know becomes very impressionable if you don't own your space so this that's this is what i mean by being the ceo of your love life mm -hmm. is about owning your vision and owning your what you engage with and owning your heart and being able to really create something different and i know for me i went from a 500 date to once i did this work right. I met Larry, he's probably the third person I met, and the people I met before him were also really great people, just not mine, and I was engaged within three months. So things can change. Th things can change, and I think that that's a powerful message for everybody listening, that so often we do, like you say, we get so stressed out or we treat the process as something onerous or something painful as opposed to it's a discovery process and I do agree completely that it's the inner work first in fact um, I tell people that so my husband passed away about four years ago and I made a vow to not make any big decisions or even try to date for at least a year my job changed a year after that and I thought okay give myself another year and I gave myself a good three years before I even tried because I wanted to make sure, who am I now? I've gone through some major life changes. What is my life about? And then of course my life did lots of, um, I don't know, aerobics and, and aerobatics and you know, wild changes. And, and I love my life, I'm doing great. And, and now I know that waiting was the right thing to do. And that waiting until I found myself as, as, as this new person was the best way to go at this. And so I've in no way given up. I'm just, um, COVID has shifted a few things. And so I'm wondering if we can talk about just words of encouragement even for people. Can we still find love in this time of social distancing? What are you finding with your clients as in, in this new time frame? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that because I know that for many people, it can be an, a, a quick, okay, it can't happen. I have to give it up. I have to like put it aside. Yet what I really want people to hear is that this is actually even more important now because what's, what we're noticing is, you know, the isolation and uh, the loneliness is so detrimental to obviously our mental health and so what i'm seeing with my clients is actually more people are recognizing you know what i really do want this like having that that little amount of lockdown i mean i'm talking about colorado where we're really locked down yes. for about six weeks yes and not going anywhere is 
it wakes people up. Mm -hmm. And so what we noticed was this huge influx of people moving to these online dating platforms, but also just online platforms. So yes. there are, you know, college gatherings, alumni gatherings, yes. there are special interest groups, there's a lot of different right. groups meeting online. So in one sense, there's ways of connecting easier than ever. And it's just about learning the skills to create relationships in that way. And I know a lot of people right now are probably thinking, but I'm so sick of being online. I don't want to be online. I don't want to be on another Zoom thing or whatever. And I and I totally hear you. And Absolutely. I would just say, you know, there's part of it is taking care of yourself in that way, but also taking care of your need to connect and have community. Right. Um, so two things, one, you know, people are being more, people are waking up to actually recognizing that this is important. Mm -hmm. The other distractions are gone. Mm -hmm. You can't just go to the gym or go out dancing or, right. you know, go to happy hour to numb yourself or distract yourself. Mm -hmm. The core human need of wanting connection and being loved and loving is louder than ever yes. so listen to that yes you know that's important and then the second piece is that you know there are there's a consciousness there's a different level there's a slowness to getting to know people so people aren't just swiping and hooking up yes you know that's it's just more complicated mm -hmm. i mean i guess people can but it's not recommended by the health department <laughs> and so these things are creating an actual space for doing that work of getting to yes. know someone before locking into the, the, the emotional attachment that happens when we hook up too fast or just jump in too fast. Yeah. So that part, I just, all of those parts, I feel like it's people are finding themselves in better relationships than they ever thought they could have right now. Right. That, it's, and, it's fascinating. and I'm seeing it with my clients. That is so awesome and I think also fascinating because so some of the work that I do with astrology is to help people find their past life wound or their lineage wound and how that has controlled them and that how we move to what our soul truly craves. S different language similar to what you're talking about. Like we have to, we have to stop being run by our past to create the future that we really want. And what I'm finding during COVID right. is because we've been pushed inward so much and we're alone, that more people are seeking that. And, and it's interesting mm -hmm. what you said that it's this um, juxtaposition of using online more and yet things are slower more like when we wrote letters or met somebody and we didn't rush into it. So, um, and I've, I, some of my clients have said, how do I even see someone? Like when Colorado during the summer, I had people do um, parking lot dates. So just meet in a parking lot, bring your chairs or pop the back of your SUV because half of us have SUVs and be far enough apart in some sort of quiet spot or near a park and you can meet face to face but without the, the sort of work, long dinner or at a bar or all that other distraction on top of it. And so you actually talk more. So, so I think that, that what you're sure. pointing out is, yes, it's more online, but on some ways it's more intimate is what we're doing. And that COVID in some ways, the pandemic has made us realize what we truly desire is in part this human connection. Do, do you ever have people who are in relationship also benefit from your work? So let's say somebody's in a relationship and, and they find you, would a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with you help them improve a relationship? I do have some a process called regenerating images and memory, which okay. is a really powerful process for anyone who's finding themselves stuck in any way okay. and so I definitely had 
typically I don't work with a lot of men in my programs, but I've had men and people in relationship and you know, people wanting to get to that next level of success come and do one of those sections because it gets to that point of creation of where the stuckness happened and it really changes that so that you actually feel different and make different choices. So somebody could be in a relationship and, and do that. And I want to point out that yeah. often often it's women who gravitate to what we're talking about more, but I think it's absolutely for men also. And it isn't just for certain kinds of relationship. I think the LGBTQIA community would also find benefit in this work. So it's not in any way Definitely. specific, right? It's simply about honoring and respecting yourself first, finding that deep love of yourself, and, and then realizing from there you manifest relationships. Right. And I think you also talk about yeah, I, about attracting things to you. I talk about the law of seduction, but I think I noticed that you also talk about sort of drawing things to you at, about instead of chasing them. Did I did I see that right on your website? Yeah, I mean, I typically talk about how you know you your inner world, your point of view is creating your reality. So so that is it but I would say that it's really a dynamic thing you know there there is attraction and then there's choosing things so it's it's not just one or the other but I think a lot of times people misunderstand attracting as okay now I don't really have to do anything or take action and when you're aligned with your truth and your inspiration and you aren't distracted by the inner obstacles of the fear and the doubt or insecurities or pressure to you know keep growing in your career or whatever the thing is that keeps you from actually choosing your love story that's also there mm -hmm. um then you know, when you have more space, then then you start noticing opportunities, and then you can choose those things that end up being part of the breadcrumbs that lead you to your beloved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I that is so lovely because I think often, as I said, I talk about the law of seduction, but the law of attraction, any of that. It isn't just sitting still and doing nothing. It is a spiritual process, which is what you're talking about. You may not use that word, but that is absolutely what you're talking about. All of that inner work, figuring that out, and then realizing that you, it, that you have to be active. So I can't just sit in my house and dream about finding love, and then that's it. That's all I do. I can't just do that inner work and then do nothing, nothing else. I expect someone to come knock right. on my door. Well, the thing is, you're going to just naturally, when you're in the space of just aligning with all of the things that light you up and you're living your life in love, because I say how you love your life is your love life, when you're in that space, you naturally are going to do things. So it's not even that you're thinking about it. It's not that, okay, well, now I can't just be sitting here thinking, well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and it will just happen right. and wait and then force myself to go online or whatever. It's just like things come into flow, yes. and then you're naturally excited to, to play online or do a dating site, or you're naturally inspired to... Um, be in new communities or whatever the thing is. Right. So we're following. So um, I love how at the beginning you talked about that the rules that sometimes we see online about how to date and how to make a good um, impression online, that that's not what this is about. This is about becoming a deeper, um, a truer sense of who you are, having that sense, living that. Loving your life is your love life. I love that. And then naturally things happen. So 
Um, it's funny because I've been so incredibly active, and numbers of my friends have too, hiking and biking, doing everything I love to do, and I'm so grateful to live in Colorado where I can do those things and still be socially distanced. I mean, it's wonderful. And I've met some just a lot of friends, a lot of new people have come into my life, and, and I just count, count all of those as, as blessings and, and gifts. So let me pause one second. I should have done this a little before. If you are tuning into the end of the show, it is the Dr. Lisa Show on KUHS Denver, the stream. I have the marvelous Macy with me today, and you can find her if you just do a Google on Big Happy Love. She is a love coach. She has um, private sessions. She has a workshop. She actually has a free webinar tomorrow, Friday, and you can go to Big Happy Love, and it is at the top of her website, and sign up for that. And what you're going to take away from this, I have to say, is not just how to improve your love life, but how to fall in love with yourself and live the life you've always wanted, and I, I think that's a fair statement. So, Macy, I have to ask you, just because all of this is wonderful, but one of the other unique things about you, as if you weren't unique enough, is this thing on your website about recipe readings, and you have to talk about that, because I've never heard anyone do that. Well, I would love to talk about it. Thank you. I, I go by Reverend Lunch Lady. I actually am a reverend. <laughs> but I call myself Reverend Lunch Lady for these readings, and I'm showing if you guys are watching the the Facebook Live or you can see us. I'm showing a recipe box that is um, one of the many decks that I have received as gifts and, and in magical ways, and I call this Dead Old Lady Secret Recipe Tarot. It's not really tarot, but... Um, and I've just been fascinated with old recipes for a really long time. And as I started reading them, I was getting these amazing messages. And, and I've always had intuitive abilities and mm -hmm. worked as a, an animal communicator and a psychic. And this was became this special gift from the divine for me to share amazing messages for people and they they can be really profound and i never get the same recipe twice well maybe a couple times i have but i have thousands of them so it's really rare right and um so i pull a card and based on what the question is i just listen to the message so how did you start and i have to say that it's so fascinating because I, you know, I do psychic work and you do, and I didn't realize you were an animal communicator. I was going to tell you that I keep picking up animals around you, that not people spirits, but animal spirits all around you. And I recently, I had to put my dog to sleep in March, and since then, an old um, dog protector that had been in my life when I was younger has shown back up. And as soon as we connected, that dog showed back up next to me. So interesting we have that in common. But how did you discover this? Mm -hmm. I've never heard anyone do this. How did, like one day you just pulled out a recipe and something happened? I just had picked up one of these old recipe books and I felt so connected to it. And it was somebody's collection of recipes. That one was actually in a small metal book where she had written all her recipes down and I felt like I just got this deep like download of her you know experience and how that connected to the family and how it just brought people together and all of the drama and the uh, just like there was so much that was connected to this book that I started just randomly opening it and receiving messages and and then it just made sense but then i saw you know recipe cards are kind of like actually pulling a card if you use tarot or some people just have angel decks and all sorts of decks and it just became my special deck and then you know i find i like humor i, I found it amusing mm -hmm. i like metaphors and just you know, playing with the, the Reverend Lunch Lady and begin giving, 
we get in from non-conventional texts and teachers. And so all of these these old ladies that contribute to these decks become the the non-conventional teachers, I guess, I don't know, texts and teachers and gospel and wisdom and all of it coming together in a way that I, you know, get to share with the world. So I'm just checking the Facebook site to see if anyone has posted any kind of question or comment. And if you're listening, you can go to Do the Dr. Lisa Show and just post a question on my site or you can also um, message me on Facebook and just wondering if there's any questions. So this is, the, again, this is such a perfect fit with your personality, what you project, is um, why, like, that you're drawn to things that are not the typical thing and you make them your own, which I think is part of the message that you're giving to men and women, right, about love is find your uniqueness, find your special place, and then let that shine. I think I did mention to you that while I did start with tarot as a kid, I now use crystal balls. And that that's yeah. my preference. Astrology and crystal balls, a combination of that. And partly because, I don't know, because they're not common, because other people don't. But I just was attracted, attracted to them. So what kind of, um, how do you find, so, you're doing these readings, and there are these lovely, um, maybe women coming, maybe men, but may, probably women coming forward as guides. Do you do this for some of your clients when they're stuck in their love life? Because I'd like, I'd love to have people also connect you to you for readings. And what, why would I would I come to you about a love life problem? And or is it really any issue in my life that I might ask you about? I am open to anything people want to ask, and here's the thing, like, all of these, the dead old ladies, there's like a whole variety of them, they have different voices, not that I'm giving a different voice when I'm trying to, but they have different ways of communicating, some are kind of like gentle and loving, like a nice hot cup of hot chocolate from grandma, and sometimes they're just kind of ripped the band-aid off, like, you know, I don't, I never know, but you know, people, it's a great, I find it to make fun community. I'll do lives and on Facebook and just have people share their questions and we do brief readings. And I offer my clients these too, and I do them um, as part of my coaching. I mean, I, it's just, it's all, it's helpful. It's a different way of getting inspiration and as long as I just tell people that, you know, there's a couple things that I, I don't typically do. I don't predict right, the, the date of when they're going to get married or anything like that. Although sometimes dates come up, mm -hmm. so I guess I can't really say, but, um, but it's not meant to be like super serious. This is about typically people ask me what are their blocks to love and and we get a lot of love and dating things i did a whole 30-day course where every day i pulled the recipe and every day it was a teaching for relationships and that was called gideon love and and people can actually get that course if they want and it's really really amazing like there it's it's just super fun what came through but every day was a different recipe I love that. I love the fact that you're, you're doing it in a different way. And and a lot of people, a 30, some sort of 30-day message is, I mean, that's quite a gift anyway. But to get it in this way from these elders that we wouldn't necessarily think of as wise women, and yet we, you know, they had their own wisdom, and you're reading through them. So I think that that's just absolutely incredible. That's, that's like they amazing. know the universal love laws for sure. I mean, that's the thing that, I mean, I I had an experience of, I was a volunteer in a senior center for a while and they really felt like that was a huge contribution to my love story because I was, you know, addressing something that was my biggest fear about being single. And one of my biggest fears was, okay, wait, I'm not, I don't have children. I'm not even married. I was single. I was thinking, 
I'm going to be that old lady in the home where no one comes to visit me. And that was just a wow. heartbreaking story I was wow. telling myself. And then I realized, like, okay, well, what could I do right now to change that? And the inspiration I got was to go hang out with single old ladies in homes. <laughs> so I went went there and hung out with the, the women that didn't have people visiting them. Wow. And I played Scrabble every weekend and I made amazing friends. And I tell you that the energy of being with these wise women, these elders, which we don't tend to value in our culture, like other cultures do, was one of the most transformative experiences of my life. I met one of my best friends there. Her name was Harriet, and she was, I, I think she actually brought the magic that brought my person in. You know, I would say that that was one of the biggest influences, and she was so supportive through me being single all the way until she actually met Larry and totally fell in love with him. And so this is really, this is really an honoring of these women that they do know a lot. Right. Yeah. I, um, just as another thing we have in common, one of my closest friends is an 80 something ish. I won't reveal her name, uh, her, her age author who's a very famous author, happens to live in Colorado, and I study Hebrew with her, but she also mentors me in writing, not by, we don't talk about writing, but writing is part of life, and so we talk about that, and it's amazing. So we just have a few minutes left. I would love to know, and thank you so much for your time, I would love to know what still inspires you, because this show, again, is about inspiring a renaissance of spirit. What still inspires you to do this work? I mean, it sounds probably obvious or cliche, but my husband really inspires me. The relationship that I've created and, you know, being in a creative, conscious, loving partnership where there are moments where, you know, we come into tension and frustration and it's like knowing that I am able to be with someone who we can put put the stuff on the table and actually listen and and adapt and transform and rise above and create even greater is an amazing thing. And beyond that, I would say, you know, I, I just really am insp inspired by creativity. I'm inspired by animals. I mean, I'm, I am so in love i would say um hashtag must love dogs must love, love coach dogs. because must love I, dogs. most of my clients are animal lovers mm -hmm. and um i know how healing that is right and in fact while i'm also you know sort of in the dating world i'm i'm also in the inviting another dog into my life world and so i'm actually using the yeah. same kind of energy of, of here's what my life is about and I want to share it, and I want a dog who wants to share Yay. that with me. And so I'm actually using a great deal of what we talked about to open that door for that for that dog. And it's so funny. I've had several psychics tell me that my old dogs are sending me a dog because the man I'm supposed to meet isn't ready yet. And so my dogs don't want me to be alone. And so it's a funny, repetitive message that that I get. And my so yeah. So I'm I'm sure. And every time I'm out hiking, other people's dogs come up to me and people will say that they don't do that. I'm like, they're just asking me where my dog is or they're telling me, don't worry, the dog's coming. And so I'm getting reassurance from other other dogs because it's it's so amazing. So I want I want to do this I want to do this again. We're almost out of time. In fact, we're gonna run over a couple minutes here. Um, people can find you if they Google big happy love. You have workshops, you have a webinar tomorrow, you do recipe readings, you do private coaching and consulting. 
And so I want everyone who's been listening to, to make sure, just go check out her website because there's all these amazing videos on there that are little tidbits and they're fun and they're inspiring, so I encourage you to do that. I also want you to remember that this is the Dr. Lisa Show and that I also have private readings and I have um, packages and I also have a workshop on uh, thriving as an empath during this time. You can find everything on my website, alisarobin.com, and you can find ways to, you can email me from there so that I can give you a session, which is usually a soul session, usually an hour and a half to two is my first one. And we talk about many of the things that Macy and I just talked about. What, do, or what are your lineage wounds? What are the, the beliefs that you came in with that are keeping you from living what your soul, the life that your soul truly craves? So I want to thank you for tuning in today. Macy, thank you for being my guest. And I am so sorry that we are actually out of time because, as you all know, this is something I love, the Dr. Lisa Show on KUHS Denver, the stream. I wish you all well, and I will be back in two weeks, one with the Crystal Ball Hour. you got to tune in for that live readings with my Crystal Ball. It's always the third Monday of every month at 2.30. And then that same week, we'll be back with another amazing guest. We are going down the psychic trail on my next one, and you've got to tune in. So thank you for joining me, and stay well, stay healthy, and I will see you soon.